Jody. Hey Jody here, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Let's get to it. This topic is on a 16 gauge stainless steel outside corner joint. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a nice wipe down and make sure there's no tape residue or oils or anything like that on it. And that's about it. This had a peel coat on it so it's pretty clean metal. Just needs to make sure there's no residue on there. Getting a tack on the end and you might notice I have this thing resting against a uh, piece of aluminum angle. I'm going to weld a little bit like this and I'm going to weld a little bit with a purge block and a little bit with no purge at all, just air on the back side. Also notice I put a little bit of extra, extra dab or two of filler wire on these ends just to give me a little bit of a dam there to keep from melting away when I weld to or from. So I'm going to weld this thing in thirds. That's called the back step method. And these are the settings that I'm going to be using, roughly 45 to 50 amps. You can pause this if you want to see the rest of those. I get going pretty quick. That's important on stainless steel. You need that puddle established within probably two seconds or less on stainless because you don't want the heat to build up. You want to get your puddle, your puddle established and get to moving. Don't use excessive heat input, just enough. And that's what I'm attempting to do here using the 045 filler. Another rule of thumb is smaller filler wires than what you would normally use on carbon steel usually work better on stainless because it requires so much less heat and it doesn't chill the puddle as much when you dab the rod in the puddle. So that's why I'm using an 045 rod here. Now that's what aluminum backing yields. Not sugared, not black whole lot better than nothing, but still not as good as with shield with argon. And so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put this little plastic hose on here on this little argon backing fixture. This is part of a T-joint backing fixture clamp that I had designed at a previous career and it became obsolete and I was able to buy it for scrap prices before I left there. Works pretty good though. I'm using a CK TIG welder at 63 amps using the foot pedal. Somewhere around 45 to 50 amps is all I needed. I'm going to float the ball to 10 CFH. And that's going to be pretty close. So now we'll see how argon backing compares to aluminum angle. So we're going to weld that in the same fashion. Get that puddle established. Get moving along and just use just enough heat so that the toes of those weld wash out and just wrap the corners in and don't add too much filler wire. So next up, we're going to use no purge or backing, just air, and then we'll get a look at the back side of, of this thing. I'm making sure here to weld just a little bit hotter to make sure that I penetrate to show what happens when you do penetrate on stainless steel with no argon or no aluminum or copper backing. Aluminum or copper backing is the next best thing. Argon is, is the best. Here's a little demonstration of how I tie in. I just keep the torch moving along as I taper off. Here's a slow motion. As I reach the previous weld, I usually, you know, slow down just a little bit, make sure that I pause just momentarily, let everything melt and blend in, and then I keep going on as I taper off amperage so that I don't leave any kind of crater hole or anything like that. And that's that. We'll take a look at the back side now, and there'll be a huge difference here between what I just welded there. It's all black and crispy. That's called sugaring or granulation. And there you see the shielded with argon part of it. Huge difference. So for some codes and specifications, argon is required. Some aluminum or copper backing would be okay. Here's a shot of one that I did without the camera in my way. And uh, just wasn't real happy with all those stops and starts and the camera in my way. And this is the dual flow meter regulator that I just added to the store at weldmonger.com. It's a very affordable dual flow meter regulator. The store is how I support these videos, so I'd very much appreciate it if you'd visit my store. Thanks for watching.